Good morning. What's up? What's going on? Another week today of Extreme Sports with your boy, Big T. King Seeds, Martin Smith. All right, right here or on the radio, AFS, blogtalkradio.com. Uh, take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Get things popping today. And good morning to everyone who is listening. And uh, let's get this thing started. At Midwest IT Support Help Desk, we believe that technology should support and enhance your organization's success, not constrain it. With our wide range of best-in-class services, we provide customized solutions that fit your unique IT needs. We are committed to excelling at our job so you can focus on doing yours. Midwest IT Support Help Desk is always available, providing your organization with professional remote help desk support services you need Midwest IT Support Help Desk will solve your technology issues day or night. Our IT staff ensures that your network and computers are up to date and ready for operation on a daily basis. Don't wait until problems occur. Let our organization solve them with our monitoring software, giving you the peace of mind you need. Let us do the worrying for you. Enabling your workforce with top-notch technologies isn't just important, but imperative for business success. This customizable solution allows your team to work seamlessly and collaboratively in a protected space. No matter what IT services you need, Midwest IT Support Help Desk will be there to support you every step of the way. Midwest IT Support Help Desk. We are committed to excelling at our job so you can focus on doing yours. Please visit www.midwestitsupport.com for more information or shoot us an email at helpdesk at midwestitsupport.com. Give us a call, 765-239-9668. At Midwest IT Support Help Desk. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning to my co-host, King Seas. What up, Seas? Hey, what's going on, bro? Good morning. Uh, good morning. Ah, uh, had to stretch, get up. It's bright and early <laughs> to get things going. Uh, so, uh, um, before we talk about the NFL, um, uh, I was on Facebook a while ago, and one of the uh, Redskins fans brought up a great question, something you might like um, <laughs> about the Kirk Cousins situation. And uh, and I had to agree with this person. Uh, her name is Brittany Donald. She's a big Redskin fan. Um, that in the last twenty five years, who has been the most productive quarterback for the Washington Redskins? And I hate to be I I, I hate to be embarrassed and say there has not been no quarterback been that productive as Kirk Cousins. And we talk yeah. about how yeah, they need to pay Kirk Cousins and stuff like that. And how what's going on, why the team you know, they haven't taken care of them. And sitting there thinking about what she said, I'm looking back to Jason Campbell, uh, Mark Brunel, uh since Mark Rizzin, the Super Bowl era it has not been no productive quarterback for the Washington Redskins. And I hate to say, even going to the Dallas Cowgirls, <laughs> they had Cowboys. Tony Romo. Put some respect on that. Put some respect on that name, man. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> but I, I, I hate to say it, and I have to admit she's right, that it has not been no productive quarterback since. He has became a Washington Redskins. So you see that stuff? Yeah. yeah, you haven't <laughs> had a good quarterback since since Bill Williams, man. And Kurt Kurt <laughs> Cousins is yeah. Bill Williams for that year. <laughs> that year y'all won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Man, you were Ever since then, man, I feel, I feel like <laughs> I feel like it's a uh, I don't know, man. I don't know what I felt like. I just felt like that it was a curse for them. Because I didn't like how they did uh, 
I ain't like how they did uh, Doug Williams, man. And that thing been heavy on my head ever since then. You know what I'm saying? I celebrated. Yeah. I celebrated with the uh, with the Redskins when they won. I ain't even gonna lie because it was. I was a young kid, a young black male at the time, and and it was odd to see a black quarter male quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Do this thing yeah. in the NFL like that. So I celebrated with them guys. You know what I'm saying? Just for them to get rid of him the next year. And I felt like it was unfair. So yeah. I know that the uh, only reason he got the opportunity was because, uh, was it Riggins who were hurt at that time? Or who, who was your quarterback? Jay Schrader. Who? Jay Schrader. Yeah, yeah, he got, yeah, yeah, he got hurt or something, right? And they had to put yeah. Doug in. And Doug ended up, getting, you know what I'm saying, taking him to the – so I felt like he had won that starting position, man. I just felt I didn't like the uh, Redskins ever since then. Well, you, you, got, you brought a great point. If people will go back and look at um, Doug Williams, uh, what's it called, made for America, uh, when NFL Network do the Super Bowl, uh, go back and do the Super Bowl, what is it, uh, America, made for America or something like that, when do the Super Bowl, talk about the past Super Bowl, where they talk about the past Super Bowl, and you brought a great point up that Doug Williams, was done dirty, and Doug talked about how really Jay Schrader was at that time was the main quarterback, and they were going back and forth with him and Jay. And he, Joe Gibbs was like, you know, I think Jay was trying to really because he was most people. If you're on the con, on contract, you're a prick, and Jay Schrader was a prick. He was that type where. If he go run the team and he go do it his way, things like that. So, Jay, yeah. and people don't know, Doug was about to get traded to the Raiders. And his, it, was, it was just – Joe Gibbs just had to sign the paper. When Joe Gibbs decided not to sign the paper, he said he told Doug Williams that I feel like you're going to win me a Super Bowl. He said, I'm not going to sign it. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so – Doug look, said he looked at him like, what are you talking about? He said, I just feel like you're going to win me a Super Bowl. And I think on two games later, Doug came in. And ever since then, he won the Super Bowl that year. So, yeah. That was a, yeah, yeah, you brought a good point. But like like she said, I, I go back to RG3. And I was thinking, I told her, you know, I was telling her, that team of they got RG three everything he needed. The team we had some big receivers that year, the two thousand twelve year, and you can go to Garcon, Santana Moss, uh, 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 I forget number eleven, number fifteen, and but all every all the receivers was big, and they got everything he needed to fit his system. They haven't got Kurt nothing he needed to do anything with. I feel, even with Deshaun Jackson leaving. But you had to look at that. RG3 got Deshaun Jackson down there to yeah. play with him. That's all. I, I, I see what she's saying. Like I said, even like I always said it, Tony, even on that Tony Romo, I, I hate to say it, Dallas Cowboys, but Dallas Cowboys always got Tony Romo anything he needed to make that team successful. And that's, that's, what what you as, that's what you got to do as a uh, head coach, and that's what you got to do as a team owner. You got to get those pieces that they need, man. Unless, unless your goal is just to be in the competition, hopefully you'll win. You know what I'm saying? Hoping that you'll win it, or if your goal is to win it, you know what I'm saying? So you, it can, you can tell who really wants to win it and who really doesn't because of the money they're putting yeah. in investing their team. You know what I'm saying, and then and the work that they put around their 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 work. I mean, their uh, players. So yeah, that's true. you can and, you can tell the Patriots Patriots yeah. keep a winning environment. You know. Yeah, very true, very yeah. true. Um, even with um, even with going looking at Jerry Jones, and I I agree mm-hmm. with you on that. Jerry Jones, um, Jerry Jones is a face of the NFL. You hate to say he's a cowboy, but yeah. <laughs> Redskins. Jerry is the face of the NFL, but Jerry has gotten 
hey, if I need somebody, if I even if I don't make the Super Bowl, I will make my team irrelevant. My team go, you yeah. know, they're gonna be talking about, and I'm gonna bring the players in that they need, and he has done that. Daniel Snyder, yeah. he got the money, he hasn't done it, and he um uh, he hasn't he hasn't done it. He just he put the best year we had was 2012 of of superstars, and even with Kurt, well, like I was saying, that you like when he bought the you like the era. <laughs> After that Tampa Bay game, they lost one game. You should have built from there. Yeah. You know, and he, uh, cause I think we went on like a six game, uh, won like six out of the last seven games and made the playoffs. Then you lose to uh, Green Bay and you didn't build from there. You just went downhill. So I I really agree with him on that. We haven't had nobody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Let's, let's go back to the coaching, man. It, I yeah. mean, I really don't want y'all to do nothing. I mean, I'm I'm happy, glad y'all the way y'all is, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but, but you know, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to have some. Yeah, I want. I do. I do at least want to have a good, you know, say a good competition this season out of y'all. Which y'all do. I yeah. mean, y- 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 y'all be having pretty decent seasons, even. With the uh, controversy and and, and 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 the mediocre play that y'all be having, y'all still end up somehow coming up with an okay season. You know what I'm saying? As far as okay, we can build off of this season, but it's always yeah. a build off of a season. You know what I mean? We need a you need a constant, yeah. yeah, need another season that you know what I'm saying a season where well, okay we improved this year. I just don't have yeah. a seat. I don't see that from y'all. Yeah, and I and I was so hurt. I, I mean. Yeah, same thing with the Cowboys. We have a a bunch of names, cool, but production wise, they haven't done they haven't done half of what they need to do to be productive and to be a Super Bowl squad. Yeah, I wasn't, you know, as far as that that one person throwing off the whole team situation, that's possible. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, when we lost, is it yeah, we lost. It seemed like we lost the team. But yeah. they start getting into the, they start coming back to themselves. Like, okay, we can do this without him. And then when he came back, it seemed like it messed the kind of kind of messed the chemistry up again. So yeah. I don't know what to say about our guys, man. But hopefully we will get it together this year. I get tired uh, of saying it every year. But. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you got to look at that whole NFC East, and and I still what I'm going back to saying about that. Is the NFC East always got to be irrelevant? Even from the dominant there, they were Philly, um, Dallas was popular, New York Giants were winning the Super Bowl, and then, like I said, then there was us, and we always looked at was looked at as a team on the back last. We in the NFC East, but hey, we, they don't think nothing about this. And I, Max Kellerman was talking about that one night. One day, and I say, you know, you know, you want to feel like he's wrong, but he was right. That yeah. you know, look at the teams that you got. The Giants always relevant. The Cowboys were always relevant. Even the Eagles were always relevant. And then you look at it, just us. We was just the yeah. team was there <laughs> to compete and play. And you know, how you gonna keep doing that every single year with stability? On, on a consistent this the NFC East, anybody go back in the days since the eighties and nineties was one of the top top knock you down uh, divisions out there. So right. how you just gonna yeah, how you just gonna sit back and not 